All right, everybody. So I have a, a game against a 1958 provisional on Lee Chess. Chess.com broke. And so we've gone for the Blackmar Gambit. All right. And let's go Von Popiel because I noticed earlier on that the uh, I, I don't have a very good record against this or with this particular opening. So this is a variation on the, the Black Mile Demon. Normal move would be Pawn to F3. But I'm putting pressure on the Knight now. I'm threatening to take out the Knight, which is the only defender of this pawn. And so a very common move here is Bishop out to F5. But then we can push F3. And if Pawn takes, you've got Queen takes, then attacking the undefended Bishop and also attacking this square on this undefended pawn. Okay, so I'm going to play this move. And we'll see how we get on. Okay, we have takes, and now it's queen takes rather than the more usual knight takes. Notice we are hanging this pawn as well, but it's immaterial because we are attacking the bishop now. The bishop could take on here, but then we take down there. And the bishop can't return to this square because of my knight. So we will see what opponent chooses to do. If I get the chance, I'm going to long castle, get my rook onto d1, which defends this. This is, I think, an unrated game on Lee Chess anyway. Taking out the knight is still an option, because neither way of recapturing is ideal for black. But we are giving up the bishop pair if we do that. See what the opponent chooses to do. Obviously we're looking at that, we're also looking at that. So the, the right move now, yeah, is to bring the bishop all the way back. Now that loses a tempo for black. So now I have uno, dos, tres pieces developed in the board and I've castled which is worth a score of two in terms of development so it's currently it's five five one in my favor now this is a uh, potential concession so he's played the kicking move pawn to h6 now if I take out the knight he's certain to recapture I think with the e pawn and that lets me throw in a check if I choose. Hmm. My bishop's probably going to come out here, maybe drop back to b3. Um, I'm going to drop my bishop back and see if he fancies the double kick, which he then can follow up with this if he wants. But that really would weaken his kingside a lot to push g5 as well. He pushes g5, I come back here, then g4 and I just need to move my queen, that's not a big issue. Bishop's gonna come out here, looking at f7. Notice I'm still a pawn down. I have no e pawn or f pawn, opponent's just lacking a d pawn, but I have plenty of compensation so far. Hmm. So what's his idea? Why that move? It gets in the way of developing this knight to c6. Also, if the queen does come out here, this pawn is defended. If the queen comes out to a5, this pawn is defended by the knight, and the knight itself is defended. So I'm not quite sure on the thinking behind that. I'm inclined to bring my bishop out now. Might still drop my bishop back, so that gives me now two defenders on the a2 pawn, which means I can save time. I don't have to move my king to be one at any point. Okay, this is the point. Defended by the knight. Now, so that is a skewer on the queen, which I missed. 
can't get my queen looking at that square anytime soon. But maybe a queen to here. If he takes, I take there. Then my queen can drop back. Okay, let's try that. So if takes here, I can take this first. If pawn takes, I then have queen e1 with a fork. Let's try it, see what happens. The bishop could do it like a desperado and capture on c2. But then I get this, I guess. I don't know. In fact, this is quite good because the bishop can't recapture without losing its own life. So dangerous, dangerous times. My opponent is up a full piece right now. Being up a, a basically, yeah, he's got a pawn and a, a rook for one knight. So if e takes, I have this, and that does win the bishop back. So a queen fork there. So he's going to have to block with either queen or bishop. Either way, I can get the bishop back, but I'm still going to be down in material. It must be said. So, also my rook's gone, so there's nothing defending this. I'm going to recapture with the queen. And I am down. I'm down an exchange and a pawn right now. I'm imagining that black's going to castle. I also have no dark squared bishop. I have a nice bishop of my own. If he does castle short... Then my bishop is staring at g8. Okay, let's drop back. Not worried about this. I can just meet that with a3. Drop back to a2 if I need. Okay, a3. There is a risk here. Takes, takes. Then I guess my knight has to drop all the way back down here. Um... But if not, I have to move the knight. Now, knight here takes knight there. Is that a horrible square to put my knight on? See, if I take and take, my knight has to come to b1. If it goes anywhere else, then they have rook down to here. Another skewer skewing the king on the queen. Or I play my knight here now. Either way, my knight can end up on that square. I'd like to have something looking there. Queen actually here is, is definitely a thought. That is a checkmate threat. Well, not quite checkmate. He's got an escape. But what about the move g6? Less than ideal. So I'm going to bring my knight back with the idea of recapturing on a3. Ooh. He's got a bishop there as well, look. Good play, Muhammad. If he doesn't take, I'm just going to push here. So again, the Von Popiel Gambit does not go my way. Queen here is also a thought, with the idea of attacking on f7. Okay, I'm going to play knight takes. I won't be too unhappy if he gets his bishop off because then he's got no, he's got no development right now. He's got bad pawns, but he is up three materials. My bishop's defended. That's quite happy. This pawn is a weakness. Queen comes out. I have to play like king b2. He's probably going to want to get his rook on b8. Okay, there we go. I always play king a2 as well, I suppose. Uh, knight out to here. That just looks very sensible. Defends my pawn. I'm also pre preparing maybe rook e1, hitting the queen and occupying the e-file. There we go. The 
I'm not worried about the queen coming in. The question is, do I drop my... If I drop my bishop back and he gets his rook here, my king's not going to be able to defend that pawn against the queen. So maybe I need to push my, my, my bishop up the board. Or I can counterattack. I can counterattack the queen here. Let's try that. Queen can't stay there or there. Okay, queen is here. That pawn is defended. Now what do we have? I come up there. Bishop could come on. That's that's a nice diagonal, seeing as the H pawn has moved. Um. Yeah, I just don't fancy my king being. If the bishop goes on this square, my king can no longer defend the pawn. That's the problem. can lift rook or queen to the third rank, thereby defending the pawn. Okay, so he's preparing this move. All right, now, do I play this now? I don't have to. I could lift my rook. I could lift my queen. Which is the more flexible move? Here, if it plays rook here. Queen still can't come in. Queen can't get on the b-file right now. If this pawn pushes, maybe she can. So I don't have to move my king yet. Probably will on the next turn. But it gives me time to play one of these. Let's lift the rook. So I'm definitely getting outplayed right now. Okay, he's come after my bishop. Now I can drop back to a2. Quite like that. Still keeps the pin on this pawn. Or if I get my queen in. I, I think I want to keep the bishop, so let's do this. We've always got king a1. And now there's no immediate check from the rook. This is still defended twice. Queen and knight. Now we have to be careful because this now comes with an attack, for example, on the rook. So I'm going to drop back now. And now he can't play this because I've got bishop takes. Rook defends this. There's nothing now defending this pawn. So if I can find any way of attacking that pawn again, then. Uh, we could be in the money, but ain't easy. Maybe something like this would be a good idea. Knight can't take the pawn. I could even lift my queen as well, just to add more fuel to the fire. So I'm, I'm not playing competitive games today. I played a couple of blitz earlier on. I think one, two, lost one. So I'm uh, still about 15.50, 15.49 maybe in blitz on uh, chess.com. Still ahead of my rapid rating. This is about 15.30 right now. Okay, so he's making moves now to double the rooks. Double the rooks, move the knight with tempo. And then the idea is to drop down, but actually, bishop defends, so that's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to go ahead with this move. I don't think he's going to sack his knight. This is the threat with the pawn fork.
Notice this is defended by the rook. This pawn is defended twice right now. I've actually just broken the pin on the f7 pawn. But that's not a massive problem. I mean, this, this would come with a fork and reopen, reapply the pin. But we've definitely got our work cut out, guys. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not playing um, rated chess right now because I'm on day one of a three-day fast. I'm not eating for three days in preparation of a liver and gallbladder flush on the new moon. Just trying to eliminate toxins that have been stored away in the liver. Hmm, so we've got a slightly gurgly tummy right now. Just had a few cups of tea today, that's all. Let's get a top up while we're here. And see what happens. I'm not in a terribly, terribly bad position here. But I think my opponent's gonna have to, uh, well, gonna have to move one of these pieces or face the prospect of losing material because this even a queen takes here doesn't work. Because I'm well defended. The back rank, no, e8, is defended only once right now. Something like this would also threaten to queen come in, king has to go to here, queen back. Don't gain material that way. Alright, what have we got here? Queen attacks the rook. Everything else is safe. So I, I've got rook here. Rook there, is there any value in that? Adds a second defender to this pawn. Um, but this is a potential passer, so let's let's double up. Let's put you know two major pieces on the same file, why not? What are you thinking, Muhammad? Okay, we have the doubled up rook. So I've still got the bishop looking there. That's okay. Um, H4 is an idea. See, rook also defends this as well. We push and takes takes. I've then got a proper pass pawn. And to be honest, I don't have any other plan, so let's go with that one. I'm enjoying losing more recently. Although I've not been losing an awful lot because my, my rating is going up, but uh, when I lose, Very well defended now, this pawn. Yeah, when I lose, I, I treat it all as a learning opportunity and I'm looking for my opponent's good tactics. This pawn's defended only by the knight. So, I mean, I do have, for example, the prospect of a rook fork here, but then I'm not gonna trade my rook for a knight and a pawn. If the knight should move, then that could potentially win a pawn. The general plan is just to push up here. If it goes to d7, he does have two defenders there. But three points of material down means I really don't want to be trading pieces. 
even for a one point advantage would be uh, very questionable If the knight moves, I can snatch that pawn immediately. Okay. Well, that doesn't drop the knight. But is rook d4 now playable? Hitting the queen. Where's the queen going to go? She can't go here. Can't go here or here. Well, she can't. If I go there, queen then has this square. But then I do win the knight. Let's see what happens. Knight can't move and attack the king because they're in different colours. Knight can move and attack the queen on this square or this square. I'd imagine that's what we're going to see. Knight here then is on the same colour as my king. So for example, knight there, you might think about like queen d2, but then they've got knight to here. No, it doesn't actually, because queen takes. So if knight here, queen d2, pins the knight on black's queen, which is undefended, yet g5 is playable. I don't really think black... Okay. What is going on? If I take with a bishop... They've got checkmate there. No, but then bishop just retreats. Here. It's not checkmate, because bishop blocks. But then rook here. I take, rook takes, I take. I've won a piece back. Um, now, what if rook takes? Can't see what's wrong with it. No, can't. Something like this. Try and trade off. And also then opening up this line. This pawn does hang actually. Okay. Bishop takes, queen takes, bishop returns. Let's see. Mate. Excellent. Excellent play. Yeah, you did it. I didn't figure it out. Hmm. Very well played, Mohammed. That is not what I was expecting to happen. Although, how do I stop this? You had mate in one. I take here, rook takes there is not mate. I could take there with a rook. Then queen takes there isn't playable. Rook takes there, I have king b1. I don't know. Rook takes, I have this. Then queen there is mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you made a bit of a meal out of that because you, you had mate in one previously. But uh, yeah, all good. So let's have a quick review. Tactically, where did we go wrong? Again, the von Popiel comes up short. Okay, so here we're, we've sacked a pawn. And at this point, I think we're good. And this was a move I didn't really understand. Because um, he didn't need to do that to release the bishop. But I think that was my... I really needed, I think, probably to play h3 here. I just wasn't looking at it. And that's where we lose material. Now I decide to trade. And instead of recapturing the bishop straight away, I give check, blocks, then I get the bishop. But we're, yeah, pawn and an exchange down now. But this 
definitely just opened me up. So yeah, that's where I think we've we've gone wrong. But yeah, the the blunder, the blunder was just missing the skew on the on the queen and rook. Uh, should have spotted that, but uh, certainly didn't. Anyway, so von Popiel, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let's have a quick. I'm going to check if the uh, Chess.com Explorer is now back up. There we go. So I'm going to look at my games as white from this position. Okay. There we go. Knight comes out. And with the move f3 here, I have a 56% win rate. And this is the standard black body gambit. With bishop g5, I have a 39% win rate. That's over 44 games, so it is significant. It's just not working that well for me. I mean, either I need to bone up on my von Popiel theory or simply go back to the standard Black Mardima, which is like this. And we, we do okay. And now if the bishop comes out, I'm fine. I just play my bishop out here, bishop c4. And uh, the most common move is now c6. And I'm doing very well at this point. In fact, wow. Wow. And we have the oh no, my queen line if we want. If they take the queen, bang, checkmate. <sighs> I like that one. So maybe we'll go back to the standard Black Maldima. But anyway, every game is a learning experience. Hope you've learned something. Thanks for watching. See you later.